This video is brought to you by Incogni, take back your data. Welcome to Electrified, it's your host Dylan Loomis. Quick shout out to my newest patrons, Jack, Jim, and Anthony. Thank you guys for choosing to support the channel. First up, today is Sawyer Merritt's birthday. This guy does so much for the Tesla community, so if you have Twitter, show him some love. If not, I will link his YouTube channel below. Maybe you can go drop a comment on one of his recent videos. Sawyer, if you somehow see this, happy birthday. Hope you have an awesome day. Here we have Tesla closing a loophole. So originally you could add FSD to your order and that would result in you getting your Tesla delivery much sooner, sometimes between three to seven months sooner. What people started to do was add FSD and then before they took delivery, they would just remove it. Tesla obviously caught on to this, so that loophole has been removed. So now there's new wording saying removing FSD will delay delivery. So yes, if you add FSD and keep it, you will still get your delivery sooner. However, those that were adding it and then removing it before delivery, you will not continue to get your delivery sooner. It will be pushed back as it should. Good. From Reuters, LG is looking to build a battery factory in Arizona by 2024 to meet demand from prominent startups and other North American customers. This LG factory will indeed be making cylindrical cells and construction is expected to begin in the second quarter of 2022, mass production in 2024 with production capacity of 11 gigawatt hours. So the initial phase of this factory is really only going to be as big as Tesla's pilot line in stated capacity, or in other terms, that's about 130 37,000 vehicles per year using an 80 kilowatt hour battery. Reuters also said potential customers would include Tesla, Lucid, Proterra, and Philip Morris for heated tobacco sticks. So good news for Tesla, but also great news for America as we desperately need as much battery manufacturing and as much of the battery supply chain to be here in America as we can. A new Tesla patent was granted today, March 24th, for pulse laser cleaning of debris accumulated on glass articles in vehicles and photovoltaic assemblies. In other words, lasers for wipers. So yes, the first thought is actual wipers for the entire windshield. However, if you scroll down in the patent, you'll read this. Similarly, accumulation of dirt on lenses of a camera mounted on a vehicle may cause errors in image acquisition, and usage of chemical solutions may be unsuitable for glass articles installed in electronic devices, for example, cameras, dashboards, and the like, as such components may turn defective with application of such chemical solutions. So I have to admit, I'm a bit skeptical. I would really need to see this in a prototype form as to how this would work for the entire windshield. I've never really had a big issue with windshield wipers to begin with, but I'm always open to new technology. So hopefully we see a prototype sometime in the future. And I'm kind of thinking that this might be more for removing debris from cameras, at least to start to ensure FSD works properly. And maybe down the line, this will be more for an entire windshield type of application. So today is a sad day for Tesla and Elon fans. Here we have it, Tesla bringing LiDAR equipped Model Y to Canada. So the gig is up. Elon has been wrong for years. Their vision only system is a sham. It's a bust, they've been wrong. Now they know they have to use LiDAR. Psych, they're just doing some initial testing in Canada before an eventual release of FSD there and they do some testing with LiDAR. So, you know, to be clear, no, Tesla is not transitioning to LiDAR. If you want to help support Tesla in Connecticut, I will include these two links below. You just go vote yes or no, should Tesla and other car companies be allowed to sell directly to consumers in Connecticut? We get some comments from Garrett Nelson, the vice president of CFRA Research, and it's always great to hear things like this. A little fun fact, Tesla has beat when it comes to quarterly earnings nine of the last 10 quarters. Garrett said, we view Tesla as having an enormous lead over all the competitors. It's why the legacy automakers have been announcing huge increases in their investments that they're dedicating toward EV growth. Tesla has a huge cost of capital advantage over competitors, so they can fund growth of new projects very inexpensively. And lastly, he said, Tesla is doing a lot of internal R&D. And that leads us here. Tesla is leading the industry in terms of R&D spend per vehicle sold at almost $3,000 per vehicle. Now, let's be clear about this data. Tesla's R&D is for a lot more than just vehicles. We're talking chips, solar roof, Tesla Energy, AI, the bot, and all of that. So taking your total R&D spend and just dividing it by only the sales of the vehicles is not the best way to go about this. And Tesla's one of the only automakers growing at such a fast clip in terms of vehicle deliveries. And given that R&D is typically three to five years out, the overall R&D spend number should really be divided by a number more like a few million rather than one million deliveries that Tesla did last year. 
This really isn't the same for other automakers because their growth rates are not the same as Tesla. And lastly, Tesla is really one of the only companies working on battery cells and autonomy in-house, which obviously you need R&D to make it happen. And most of these other car makers are using suppliers to do this. So just some clarification on this data. With all of that context in mind, we can still look at this and say, okay, Tesla is spending about three times as much in terms of R&D per vehicle compared to the other legacy automakers. Given how wildly efficient Tesla is with its capital, this only means great things for the years to come. Briefly, I'd like to thank Incogni, the sponsor of today's video. This new service is actually brought to us by Surfshark, a company many of us know and trust. Alarmingly, many people are not aware that thousands of companies are collecting your personal data and selling it online. Incogni will do the work for you to make these companies stop and will remove your personal information from these databases. So these data brokers can get your information from online shopping, apps that you use, or just scraping the internet and public records in general. And yes, this should frustrate you, and yes, we should all do what we can to take back our privacy. The good news is using Incogni is very easy. Just create an account and tell them you want to have your personal data removed. Incogni will contact data brokers for you and request that your data is removed. Incogni handles all of the objections and requirements for you, saving you a ton of time and energy. Incogni has offered the first 100 electrified subscribers 20% off. So if you'd like Incogni to handle this laborious process for you, just use my link in the description below and take back your privacy. From yesterday's video, there were some comments about disappointment on things that I said about Tesla and vehicle to grid. I just wanna be very clear, I am pro vehicle to grid technology. I think in the future, this will be very useful in select applications. However, I think there are a lot of challenges right now that ultimately need to be overcome. So I just wanna take a few seconds to highlight those challenges and summarize where we're at with Tesla and vehicle to grid. So once again, to be clear, I am in favor of vehicle to grid. I just think that we might be a decade away from this becoming a meaningful route to meaningful energy generation. First of all, there's a reason Tesla is not doing this. Tesla did vehicle to grid with a Roadster, but they said that no one used it. And now granted, yes, that was a while ago. We also have Elon saying, quote, vehicle to grid sounds good, but it has much lower utility than people think. This was at battery day. Separately, JB Straubel said, vehicle to grid is something I don't see being a very economic or viable solution, perhaps ever, but certainly not in the near term. It is true that transistors required for vehicle to grid technology are more expensive than Tesla's current design. Monroe did a video on this subject in 2020 and the mechanics of the present circuit board would need to change. So if you think a software update is possible to allow vehicle to grid for Tesla's, then the answer might be no, at least according to Monroe. And to all of those who argue that Tesla just doesn't want to cannibalize Powerwall sales, well, look, there's been no shortage in demand for Powerwall, and now Tesla is actually only selling Powerwall with solar roof or solar panels, so to me, they're not really worried about Powerwall sales. With the Powerwall, there has always been far too much demand and not enough supply. I just believe that Elon ultimately believes that Powerwall will give the customer more flexibility and avoids the customer waking up in the morning with no charge because the car was discharged overnight. Another aspect that some detractors would argue is the shortened lifetime of the battery pack. So this doesn't just shorten the duration of the battery pack because each pack has a limited cycle life, but it also impacts the warranty situation that companies offer on certain vehicles as this is usually based on mileage. And then we have the financial incentive has to be right for the customer and so far it is not always the case. Remember, utilities have to want to buy the energy in the first place. They need a bigger fleet and more reliability to buy this energy and have it reliably. This vehicle to grid technology does require additional hardware for homes to accept power from an EV battery and bi-directional chargers do still cost more. Many vehicle to grid contracts require specific fixed plug-in times and other contract details that might not be convenient to the owner. And ultimately, I just think at this point, the market isn't fully ready for all of the technical detail, 
all of the standardization issues that would need to happen. There's just limited clarity of what value different utility companies will ultimately place on this type of technology. Not to mention, it's an entirely new program that all customers would need to understand, sign up for, monitor monthly statements. And look, I just think the truth is some people just don't care enough to make an amount of money that might not ultimately be that impactful. And we have to remember, what about all of those millions of vehicle owners that live in apartment complexes where vehicle to grid might not even be a realistic option? So to answer the question, is there hope Tesla does vehicle to grid? I would say sure especially if other automakers continue to pursue this technology and bring it to market and consumers start to use it and it's beneficial, then Tesla's hand will be forced to some degree to ultimately move this way. So to be clear, no, I am not anti-vehicle to grid. I just think we might be a few years away before the technology is really impactful. And yes, in theory, this technology makes all of the sense in the world. I understand all of the arguments for it. I am for it. I just think we're a few years away from the adoption being big enough for you utilities to consider it more and for all of the technical and regulatory details to be worked out. Here we have a new video of the 23 Cadillac Lyric being built here in Tennessee. Fun fact, the Lyric is built on a flexible assembly line at Spring Hill, which allows for ICE vehicles to also be built on the same line as the battery electric Lyric. This car is powered by a single motor rear wheel drive powertrain rated at 340 horsepower, set to have 12 battery modules for a 100.4 kilowatt hour Altium battery pack providing a GM estimated 300 miles of range on a full charge. Growing up as a kid, I always wanted a Cadillac, so part of me is interested to see how this vehicle turns out. Neo is reporting earnings today and they will have a webcast later today. Ford is continuing to shift its organization structure. Ford Next isn't really a new division, it's just a rebranding. This will now include Ford's autonomous division and Ford Next will start reporting its financial earnings next year. And last up for today, we got this video from Volvo saying it will be implementing what we know as gigacast and structural battery packs in their upcoming vehicles. I just really stopped in my tracks and thought to myself how incredible it is, how much change one company, Tesla, really has spurred across the entire auto industry. So much of this advancement would not be happening if it weren't for Tesla. So, so far, is Tesla transitioning the world to sustainable energy? I would say the answer is a resounding yes. Every now and then it's good to slow down, look around and see how much is changing. And there's really one company causing it all. That'll do it for today. Don't forget, check out Incogni linked below. Please like the video if you did. Hope you guys have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.